Uh, hello, ma'am. I hope there is no issue in sharing the screen, ma'am. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, no, I think I have shared the screen. Is it visible to you all? Uh, yes, it's visible now, ma'am. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I welcome you all in today's webinar on nutrition and diet for runners. And for today's webinar, we have with us uh, Shreya Sastri, ma'am. She holds an expertise in preventive clinical nutrition. She is a published author for newspaper like Deccan, Bangalore Mirror, and magazines including Famina and India Today. She also actively involved in conducting corporate webinars with companies like Titan on semiconductors, telesolutions, and many. She holds a double master's in sports science and applied nutrition. She is also a certified trainer in bariatric nutrition and diabetic education. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, I think without much uh, delay, I would like to start off. Um, so today's topic is really close to me. And um, it, this is something that I'm doing on a day to day basis right now. And uh, it's also one of the most upcoming um, branch, which is nothing but sports nutrition for all those who are uh, into fitness, uh, who are very health conscious and uh, who actually want to be more fit because I see a lot of people do running, you are into gymming. So, uh, but the thing is, sometimes we get it wrong when it comes to nutrition because we have so many social media you know, and so many people talking about it. Um, so many influencers playing a big role. Um, so I think here today I'm talking about um, runners uh, from a very professional perspective and from a very, uh, you know, I can say the casual runners also. I mean, I'm trying to throw light on all different kinds of, um, you know, people who are mostly into running. Um, also, I would like to give this disclaimer that the nutrition requirements in today's case is exclusively for runners. If you are in any other for if you are into any other sport, like um, let's say you are into swimming or you are into badminton or you are into hockey, then uh, this may not really be applicable to all of it. Okay, so um, I think without doing uh, without much delay, um. I hope you can all see the screen and uh, I would like to uh, pass on. I mean, I mean, I would like to go ahead. So why is nutrition uh, so important for runners? Um, so generally people uh, start running for different reasons. Sometimes people as they're aging, they want to get into some physical activity. Sometimes it's more about fitness. You want to maintain your weight. Sometimes it's about, you know, you, you are a professional runner itself. So you're an athlete. So you want to enhance, you know, your performance and all of that. But nutrition, um, you know, so many times we don't even understand the real um, reason why nutrition is the key for uh, any athletic performance. I think recently I saw an interview by one of the players, I think the Pakistani player who said, um, I think, I think uh, I hear some background noise. So kindly mute yourself uh, or if you have anything to ask, we can have the question and answer session at the end. Um, so I think I recently came across this interview. I don't know how many of you found that. Uh, ki, um, P, uh, I think one of the Pakistani player, cricketer, uh, said that they are not really able to hold the stamina on the ground. And that is why that was one of the reasons for which, you know, they are not really able to perform and uh, they don't really have sufficient protein in their diet. So this was one of the interview by a renowned Pakistani cricketer when they lost the match you know so uh, pro, uh the, it's not just about protein it's not just about fat uh nutrition on the whole matters maybe uh you know exercise is one way to keep yourself fit but um and the way you exercise and your uh whatever whether you're a professional runner or if you're under any coaching or any you know uh training but the most important is what you eat uh having said that i'm not saying you need to get really obsessed with it and start you know developing that as a very psychological thing that you're not eating anything but it's important for all these, you know, factors. One, if you're a professional runner or even if you're into some sort of running where you run 
once in 15 days or you are a marathon runner or you run just for the you know joy of it uh it's very important from the pers- performance type of, you know performance perspective like i was talking about this pakistani cricketer it's also very important from the recovery and repair why nutrition plays a major role it's also important from the injury prevention especially in most of the professional runners we see they're that very prone to injuries and it takes care of your deficiencies you know if you are hormonally let's say you have a problem then you start you know you are into running it takes care of your endocrine part and it basically gives you the happy hormones any exercise as a matter of fact whatever you like doing whether it's yoga whether it's running whether it's gymming um it basically gives you the physical mental and emotional happiness um so this is why nutrition is really important uh, in a professional setup i would just go with the top 3 parts that is the in, in enhancing their performance in recovery and repair and to prevent the injury prevention um so sports nutrition pyramid i think this is a very interesting pyramid that i would like to talk about so generally when we talk about ma'am in, just yeah? one minute ma'am i think uh, it's not visible ma'am uh can you not you see, see your ppt ma'am um okay do i reshare it oh uh, yes sure ma'am now ah uh, yes it is clear ma'am yeah so the previous slide was visible i uh, know ma'am we were just stuck to your uh, files that's it ma'am okay this one this one was not visible and the entire ppt ma we were just seeing your that number of files that's simple that's it okay but this now it's visible right uh, yes it's moving also yeah so um this is this was the previous screen that i was talking about the recovery the repair and to prevent injury and uh, now i hope you can see the sports nutrition pyramid screen Uh, yes we can ma'am yeah yeah uh, thanks and in case you're not able to see then just kindly stop me okay yeah so am i audible ah uh, yes you are ma'am yeah yeah so in case i said it's not visible then do stop me in between sure okay. ma'am yeah so like i was talking about the sports nutrition pyramid so most of the times when whenever we talk about any sport like you know we we say that the kid is going to swim or we are we somebody is playing badminton someone someone is into hockey i think the first thing that comes to our mind because of the way marketing has been done and because of the way people have fantasized things um i think um, the first thing that comes to our you know head is supplement and we think it's a lot of money because we have to again buy a lot of supplements we need to be on a very strict diet for that and um, i don't know it's made it's made very different whenever you say that you're into a sport then they feel that oh they must be doing something extraordinarily different or maybe that's something uh, very uh, time consuming very expensive and um, and many people even uh, prioritize things like that they don't really care about what they eat what they don't eat but uh, sometimes they do get misled by some people asking them to take some supplement or some powder uh, for quick results and um, i don't know i think few months back there was an incident where um, it it was in one of the newspapers where a kid uh, a kid as in a college going kid or a university going uh, boy had taken um, supplement and he was overdosed with the supplement and he was Was admitted to the hospital. I I don't know if you know pe- you guys paid attention to that. So there is a lot of marketing. There are a lot of false claims that keeps coming in. Um, you know through media and through, uh, you know, uh, different platforms, and we we tend to fall prey because we all like uh, at the end of the day want to look good, feel good, be healthy. but when it comes to sports nutrition it's not necessary that you have to be doing something extraordinarily different and something with very sophisticated uh, to be a good runner or to be a good sports person you can still have normal dal roti chawal sabzi and you can still perform you can still have a good fitness or a finesse level so i think the pyramid talks basically about what has to be prioritized versus what generally athletes are told to prioritize 
So here, all I say is start from the basic balanced, adequate overall nutrition, okay? And uh, then comes your timing of the meals because many a times with sports, you know, people travel, there are a lot of tournaments and at times, you know, it also depends on the psychological part because if you are winning the game, if you are losing... Uh, that also plays a major part. And then you have the supplements. I'm not saying supplements are bad. Yes, in certain conditions, in certain games, in certain aspects, we do prefer or we do prescribe supplements. But there is always, you know, um, a, an index based on which, uh, you know, we, we administer supplement. So I think this is very important, even in this case, when I'm talking about running, because people think that they have to unnecessarily load themselves with energy bars, with gels, with X, Y, Z things. But it just depends on you, your body, your gender and how much are you able to do it. It is totally customized. It cannot be a one size fits all. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, so which one are you? So here I would like to categorize uh, running since we are exclusively talking about diet in runners today. I would like to categorize this into three kinds, you know, or three categories majorly. The elite or the professional runner is, you know, someone who is training, uh, running five, six times a week, who is a who is in a very trained setup, who has a coach, who has a strength and conditioning person, basically a, a person who is uh, professionally doing this, okay? And uh, the second one is the recreational or the average runners. Uh, someone who, who just likes to run, who's just doing it to maintain the fitness, who's just trying to, you know, uh, who just likes doing it, like how we all trek, you know, like professional and non-professional trekkers. Um, and more of group running, like you have running for a cause, like you have walkathon and running. So it's more of that, okay? And then you have the hybrid. So hybrid are people who do associate themselves with some sort of professional uh, groups. And at the same time, they do train intermittently. Maybe they're not running every day, but maybe they also are kind of professional, semi-professional where they run once in 15 days, where they're running a 10K marathon, 15K marathon. and But they also are exercising, they're following a diet, but not very professionally. They're not like taking any training. So these are the majorly three categories where people, you know, fall under. They'll be either in one of these three. So it depends before you go ahead with your nutrition, you need to first categorize yourself and see which one are you coming into. So most of us, 90%, I think of the crowd here may not be in the elite category. Either we are in the second category of recreational or average runners, we are just doing it for our health and for our fitness, or maybe we are in the hybrid category. So then again, you have two subdivisions where you do the endurance or it's called the long distance running where you have a 5K or 10K or a half marathon, ultra marathon. I think Bangalore, it's very popular for all these, you know, marathons. You have running for a cause, you have pinkathon, you have so many things, right? And then you have a sprint or a short distance running, which majorly happens in your grounds, majorly like your stadiums, which is more or less like a race. So nutrient requirements, this is very important change accordingly whether you're running a long distance one whether you're running a short distance whether you're a professional runner or you're a hybrid or a recreational runner it's very very important for us to understand that our nutrient requirements change what do i mean by saying that nutrient requirements change it it means that um your energy intake the way you fuel yourself the way you uh, the amount of carbohydrates that you consume the amount of protein that you consume all of this change you can't really rely on a website you know and say that yeah i'm somebody told me to eat you know 200 grams of protein or 100 grams of protein or 300 grams of carbs or a 5000 kilocalorie diet doesn't work that way so frequently asked questions when it comes to runner's diet, how many kilocalories to be taken in a day? So everybody, nobody wants theory here. So coming to the main question and answer stuff. So how many kilocalories? So again, my answer would be the amount of kilocalories that you would need is totally dependent on the kind of running you do if you are an endurance runner then you need more energy because you need to sustain you cannot start feeling tired within the first half an hour of running if you are a sprint runner then i would give you a little um you know uh, less energy when compared to the 
लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस रनर एंड आई नीड यू टू हैव मोर इंटेंसिटी बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट यू टू बी फास्ट ओके आई वॉन्ट यू टू बी मोर अजाइल सो आई वुड ट्राई टू फोकस ऑन योर डिफरेंट एनर्जी सिस्टम सो आई एम श्योर योर यू गाइज नो ए टी पी पी सी आर सिस्टम दी एरोबिक सिस्टम दी एन एरोबिक सिस्टम सो ईच एनर्जी सिस्टम यूज इज डिफरेंट मशीनरी और डिफरेंट वे टू ब्रेक डाउन और प्रोड्यूस एनर्जी राइट द ए टी पी इज प्रोड्यूस इन अ डिफरेंट वे so how much of protein to be consumed again all these questions how much of water do i drink during the run or post run do we really need supplements is a vegetarian diet good enough if you are a runner all these things matter majorly on the kind of running how professionally you do what's your age what's your fitness level are you having any other medical condition all these factors have to be kept in mind before customizing or coming up with a diet chart so a few myths that i would like to burst here uh, many people think running is bad for the knees and so many times they hear it from the orthopedicians too uh, so basically it depends on again uh, the way you're running your posture is very important and whenever you start running most of us we we tend to uh, run on a very flat surface that is not really advisable we always tell even people to walk at an inclination and at a lesser speed so it's not really important for you to run at a faster speed even on a treadmill even if you are a beginner if you are practicing to run it's always important that you have the inclination even on a treadmill and the speed can be less okay and especially in a city like bangalore um it's always better to run on a track where like a stadium track than running in a park right so because these are the wrong practices i see a lot of people running in a park the 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 sim, you know the uh, the park and the stadium ka track is totally different so when you're running in a park it's it's not really making dif a difference because it's just putting more pressure on your ankle and knee so that is when you tend to hurt yourself and i i see a lot of people slipping having a fall and all of that so running is not really bad for knees that is the first and the most common thing that i get always do carbohydrate loading because you need more of that no not necessarily yes you need carbs when you are a runner yes because you need a longer sustainability but you also it depends on the kind of running you are doing suppose you are a short uh, a sprint runner then i would give you some simple carbs because i want the energy systems to peak and if you are a long distance runner i would not give you a lot of simple carbs because then you will have a sudden peak of energy and then you will uh, lose out on your energy you know after a when you are nearing your you know the end of the race and i need to be fueling with food and hydration mix on every run um so during the run is also very important like how we have something like a pre run or a post run during the run is also important but it's not necessary that you always eat something usually you see people who are playing tennis or any long activities if you're an endurance runner then probably you will have to um, have something like an isotonic drink or a hypotonic drink which i'll be talking about in the next few slides that's nothing but your simple nimbu pani or to tender coconut water or maybe depending on what kind of distance you are running probably an energy bar would do but not necessary that you always keep fueling you you carry a lot of food and you have to eat something like uh, you know a big meal or something like that and all the runners need the same calories or runners need less calories yes so either people think that runners need more there are one set of people or one set of you know literature which uh, wrongly says that they need more or some really suggest very less because they they think that runners have to be very lean but it's not about needing more or needing less it's totally dependent on your physical activity levels again and again i'm saying the same thing and it totally depends on the kind of running that you do so based on that you have the ioc recommendations you have the uh, you know recommendations from the sports bodies which tells you how much of kilo calories you need so what runners you really need in their diet so these are the recommendations given for a professional runner professional runner here i mean by someone who is running 5 uh, to 6 days 5 uh, to 6 days a week so for such a person the general energy requirement in a day is around 3500 to 4000 kilocalories a day 
trust me they need this okay and the carbohydrate generally is around 6 to 8 gram per kg body weight so if you are someone whose body weight is 60 kg so the minimum carbs he needs is 60 into 6 which is nothing but 360 grams of carbs will be the minimum you know the lower limit and protein is anywhere between 1.5 grams to 2.5 grams per kg body weight per day and the fat percentage we also tend to go up, we tend to take it till the upper limit of 35% because many people think that only carbs are important, only protein is important and they don't really check or keep a tab on the fat. Fat is equally important because if you do not have the healthy fats, carbs generally break down quickly and then you start feeling tired. So you also need that little bit of essential fat which you get from your diet to keep you going to make sure that you're not having a lack lactic acid accumulation to make sure that you're not having a cramp to make sure that you're not as uh, you know accumulating a lot of uh, pyruvates or lactic acid in the system and micronutrients in runners are extremely important it could be calcium it could be vitamin d it could be iron it could be zinc because yes running involves a lot of lower body and lower body especially your hips your knees your joints are mostly engaged in these activities and that is why i'm not saying you all need a supplement but uh, micronutrients like zinc selenium can come from normal nuts seeds salmons your fishes your chicken all of that so a proper balance of your food is very important Important. And vitamin D, I think most of them are deficient, whether you're a runner, not a runner. So it's all the more very important that you focus on your micronutrients because majorly everybody is talking about carbs, protein, and we don't really pay attention to the micronutrient. So the next important thing that I would like to talk is about nutrition periodization. So this is for someone who is also a high hybrid runner or who is not even a professional runner but who is just running uh, maybe once you know once in 15 days for the fitness or who's also a part of groups so nutrition periodization is very important when it comes to your phase because I know a lot of people um, who are not really professionally doing it like I mean who are not doing it a full-time thing but they're also not, at the same time not very casual so for such people when they have a run coming up like let's say next 15 days you have some run that is coming up you want to run a marathon so you need to understand that there are four different phases in this entire thing so there is a general phase there is a specific phase there is a training phase and there is a rest phase so suppose now most of us can be in the general phase or the specific phase uh, so if you're in the general phase like you have the run which is coming in next 15 days it's very important that you start training so I'm sure you all will be training like you know whether it's you will be doing a very high volume training um, and maybe it will be a mix of your resistance training like your gymming and it'll also be a mix of your core and cross training and all of that along with your running. So in these conditions, you see the calorie recommendations are very important because you need to fuel up the body because, you know, when you're running, it is very important that you have your glycogen stores intact because what happens, it's not about only that one day of food that you eat. It's about the previous 15 days or 10 days, what you have eaten matters because your glycogen stores are going to be used when you're doing a long distance running or maybe even a sprint running to some extent. So it's very important that you fuel up yourself very well. So these are all the carbohydrate, protein and fat recommendations. So in the general and specific phase, um, general phase focuses more on the aerobic development means you start running with little bit of you know weights and dumbbells but in a specific phase you're doing more of your muscle exercises like you're training your quads you're training your hamstrings probably you're training the calf you're training the ankle and on all of that so closing to three thousand to five thousand is what i can roughly say because i'm putting in both male and female together here i'm not separately considered uh, male and female so i can say three thousand to four thousand for a female and uh, maybe four thousand to five thousand for a male who is doing it very you know in these two phases with that intensity protein i would like to say anywhere between 1.5 to 2 gram per kg body weight carbs between six to eight uh because you know I would not say even 10 or 12, though it's the recommendation, but 6 to 8. And fats, again, 1, 1 to 1, 1 gram for a female and 1.5 for a male, you know, gram per kg body weight. So this is in the pre-preparatory phase, if you can call. 
and then comes your competition phase so let's say that you are now nearing your run okay so if you're in the competition phase so that is when you have a lower training volume you're not doing it that intensely but maybe the volume is lesser but you have the training quality is very different right so you will not just you know or uh, do a simple treadmill or probably do a simple strengthening but you will increase the repetitions you can increase the variations so that is what i mean by quality here so when you are in that phase where you are almost nearing the event um and at that time i would like to say for a female it is somewhere between 2800 to 3000 kilocalories and for male it is between 3000 to 4300 kilocals um protein again for a female i would like to say it's 1.5 for a male it can go up to 1.7 and carbs again between 6 to 8 for a female and up to 10 for a male uh, depending on his you know weight and how fit you know, he is and fats 0.8 for a female during the competition phase and for a male I would give up the upper limit of 1.2. So this is called nutrition periodization which is very very important and which people don't do. They just you know they, they run and then later they end up having problems and the transition is extremely important. So in the transition period after your run it's very very important you just cannot stop the diet like haywire or just the, the next day anyway you will have a lot of pain body ache and all of that however professional or however trained you are but you just cannot stop it abruptly so you need to transit very well and here again you will have a lower intensity training you will have rest you will have some psychological physiological recovery strengthening uh, rehabilitation is very important and here i would like to say a 2000 kilocalorie diet for a female and for a male maybe 2,500 to 3,000 and protein 0.8 to 1 gram per kg body weight for males and females both and carbs anywhere between 4 to 6 gram per kg body weight. So 4 grams as in if your weight is 70 kg, it's nothing but 280 grams of carbs in a day. So this is very, very important that you transit very smoothly, very graciously. Otherwise, what happens is when you're preparing and then you're tapering into a competition phase and most of them do not do the transition phase they are just totally off the diet it's like a run ho gaya khatam. so from today i'm eating everything possible let's see what happens until i'm running next so that is extremely wrong i mean that's extremely bad so it's very important that you transit so essential components so like i talked about the nutrition periodization that is of the mainly three phases which is your preparatory competitive and your transition phase and then comes the nutrition customization so customization as in uh, you need to consider though i gave you the different recommendations for male and female it's very important you see the gender like i was talking about and you see the age okay if it's uh, someone who is 50 plus and he's running if it's a male then i see a lot of other other parameters of like his blood sugars his family history of thyroid heart problems all of these and i also see the training capacity because though we talk about you know intense training and all that uh, a 28 year old runner and a 50 year old runner uh, will have different training schedules and it has to be customized so a 28 year old runner can have a very intense training schedule a 50 year old can have a little mediocre intense training schedule so you need to understand what kind of training they're doing you just cannot say that yeah 28 year old kobe i'm giving the same diet 50 year old kobe i'm giving the same diet so it does not work that way and of course the cultural eating habits matter uh, I do not believe in this principle of asking someone to change their eating habits. If you are a rice eater, then I'm sure you enjoy rice better than roti. If you are a roti eater, then I understand that you enjoy roti better than rice. So I cannot ask someone to totally change their eating pattern just because I have to satisfy the carbs and the protein or match up the fats in the diet. So it's important that we always keep in mind um, what the person or the, you know, the client needs very very important is the electrolyte balance so whenever it comes to any short distance running or long distance running there is a lot of sodium and there is a lot of electrolyte like your sodium potassium calcium being lost in this whole process so uh, we do something called the sweat rate analysis so generally especially this is done in a long durance uh, long distance or a endurance kind of a event where it lasts more than 90 minutes uh, so we generally take the pre person's pre body 
weight before the activity and then we check the person's post body weight after the activity and then we see how much of sweat you know in terms of water is being lost and then we supplement them uh, depending on the amount of loss in terms of sodium potassium and you know either in, in the form of a sachet or either we give them you know during the run that is why most of the times we have nimbu pani these are all nothing but isotonic drinks or depending on what kind of sport you're playing uh, and what kind of distance you're running we have something called the hypotonic drink so hypotonic drink is like your ors and electrolyte where i don't want the person to have a sudden rush of sugar but i want the electrolytes to be reaching the body but i also want him to sustain for a longer time especially this works when you are in a marathon because if i give you an nimbu pani or some glucose then you will have a sudden rush of sugar and then you will again feel tired after half an hour of running so in that case we have something called the hypotonic where the sugar and the concentration of the salt is lesser than the body ph and we don't want a sudden spike of sugar in the body and i want that person to last for long so there are a lot of such products in the market but if i if you ask me simple you know long story cut short if you are playing something or if you're doing for a longer time the longer the duration i don't want the sugar spike so stick to an ors or a simple sweet salted you know drink if you are someone who is just running a shorter distance you are a sprint runner then have nimbu pani that's the whole you know part of the electrolyte balance uh, but yeah you also have sophisticated drinks energy gels which are which are in the market which work on the same electrolyte balance principles um, and the four r's are very important in whichever type of running you do it's rehydrate repair refuel and rest so these four r's is are very important in any sport but in in this sport it's it's or in this game it's all the more it makes a big difference because rehydrate you know all of us know how important is hydration we know so many times people run suddenly drink water and we know that they are choked to death um so i see a lot of such things where some some kid suddenly drank water and then you know he's choked so hydration is again very important i'll keep talking about it how much of water you can drink during the run and post run and how to start drinking water and uh, i see a lot of people who say that i can't drink a lot of water before the game also because i feel bloated so it's not a very easy thing like you say drink 6 to 8 glasses of water it doesn't work that way it has to again i'll talk about it in the upcoming slide so repair yes repair is you need to at least give 4 hours of rest between your uh, you know next session so this is majorly for the professional set of people if you are again training so you cannot train within the you know within those 4 hours you at least need 4 to 4 5 hours of rest so if you are running in the morning at 10 am you can't again have a run at 4 you know maybe uh, 2 pm in the afternoon right so that repair that and that uh, you know rest is very important and refueling is um, the major phases that i was talking about depending on which phase you are in you are in the off season or you are preparing for a run or you are you know how close you are to that run so all of that you know depends on these four hours so uh i was talking about the meal pattern and the timing so first is uh, very importantly i would like to first talk about the spacing between the meals so most of us do not understand the spacing very correctly even though they are sports they are into sports uh because the training schedules and probably the travel the tournament all these are the external factors so it's very important that you space them very well i'm not saying eat once in two hours that may not be really practically possible but uh kind of you know have a body clock and to make sure that you're not skipping meals like you are eating the breakfast you're eating the lunch and you're having the dinner and then when i'm uh, coming to the hydration principle that i was talking about so using the sweat rate analysis like i said we find out how much of water is being lost in terms of sweat so for every 1 kg loss of water we generally suggest 1 liter of water has to be taken post workout but that doesn't mean that you gulp water all of a sudden 
garden at once. So generally before the run, we uh, half an hour before the run, we generally give half, at least half a liter of water to the runner uh, so that, you know, that water doesn't make him feel bloated and he, he is not under that pressure of running immediately. And during the run, sometimes we ask them to sip water, which could be anywhere between 15 to 20 ml or maximum 30 to 60 ml, depending on the distance that he or she is running. And immediately after the run, we do not really give water like half a liter or one liter of water immediately again we start it with sips like 60 ml 70 ml allowing him or her to breathe and then make sure that in the next one and a half or two hours he has had the whatever amount of water that he has lost during the run depending on the sweat rate analysis so if you want to really um, you know advise someone uh, please make sure that you are advising it right because um, water consumption really may plays a major role and do not give someone one big bottle of water as soon as they run a big you know marathon and come um, do not skip meals because I, I see a lot of runners tend to skip and the pre-training meal and the post-training snack is very important so the day you're running uh, leaving that aside but the other days I, I see that most of them do not have a pre-training meal so that's very important because your pre-training meal consists of a lot of glycogen and which decides your stamina or your fitness for the entire duration so you do not eat anything or you go and run in an empty stomach or you have have a coffee or a normal tea and go run uh, it doesn't work that way generally we say a 300 to 400 grams of carbs have to, has to be taken before the me uh, before the run so that's nothing but you can have something like an aloo chart like a bread pizza like a uh, you know I can say sweet potatoes um, you know maybe a roux abza, all of these can be your good pre-training meals or maybe a bowl of upma all of these like a sago upma and the post-training snack majorly depends on your protein intake so generally we keep that between 18 to 24 grams per meal so post good post-training snack should be uh, something like your under you know basic basic simple boiled eggs or scrambled eggs or uh, maybe a protein bar or something like uh, ground nuts, you know, basically giving you 18 to 24 grams of protein. So that is very, very important. And uh, otherwise, what happens is you tend to have an imbalance in the system. You will not really last for long and your stamina is affected, your muscle is affected. So the idea of running is to lose the fat or to keep yourself fit and not to, you know, damage the muscle. So fueling up in post race. So this is again fueling up. I think I've spoken enough about it in nutrition periodization. So fueling up is what you do in the competitive phase and in the preparatory phase, especially the preparatory phase. Um, like I told you how much energy, how many carbs and protein fat and the pre-training since again, again, I'm stressing more about on that because I see a lot of people, they have their lunch and then uh, maybe around 1 p.m. Um, and then they have a training or they go for a run in the evening at 6 and all they do is at 4 o'clock they probably have uh, a coffee and a tea and then they go for a run so it's not it's not really helpful maybe along with that black coffee or a tea it's very important that you have some nuts or like I, I gave you the options you need to have a cereal based thing and then go for a run again depending on what kind of a run it is you need to decide your cereal if you are doing a short run then you can have something like a sago upma but if you're doing a long distance running then I want you to have something like a complex carb and go so that you don't really feel tired in the first half an hour of the run okay and during the game energy drinks that i was talking about nimbu pani your ors so hypotonic again for just repeating the same hypotonic is something that uh, doesn't want uh, a, a quick sugar spike it's uh, it, the salt and the sugar concentrations are lesser than the body ph and it's mostly given for a long distance runner isotonic is for a normal you know sprint runner or a normal run which lasts less than 90 minutes it's basically to replenish the electrolytes in the body so majorly taking care of the sodium potassium so for a base a good example for that could be your nimbu pani your uh, you know any watermelon juice uh, any fruit based kind of you know sweet lime voila uh, sugar lime and sugar salted water basically that is isotonic 
and post like i told you uh, 18 to 24 grams of protein is what we target and the carbohydrate uh, post run is around 1 gram to 1.2 grams per kg body weight so more than carbs it is mainly the more emphasis is laid on protein after the run so again it's very important that immediately after the run you should not stuff yourself with an egg or with some you know a very high protein source because then you will feel bloated so yes start it with water first relax sit down drink sips of water hydrate yourself and then probably start with a drink so have something to drink so generally what we do here is we generally give milkshakes or something like that and then see the person is okay tolerating that and then we give a meal like maybe probably like an egg or some scrambled egg or some you know something like that so uh, thank you very much for a patient hearing. So I would just like to say that pre-workout nutrition is necessary for performance and post is also necessary for progress because that's the main aspect here. I see that the pre and post uh, are not really taken care of. And whether you are an elite runner, recreational runner, hybrid runner, I think proper nutrition is the key to unlock your body's potential because with so much of, you know, health, fitness, body and all that being, you know, body awareness being around i think um, we have too many things so we don't know which is correct and which is wrong so we tend to listen to a lot of people uh, some people are like just doing it out of practice some people are doing it you know professionally so yes um, it's very important that before you sign up for something you understand the pros and cons of everything and then you do it very mindfully so thank you very much uh, thank you for having me here and uh, any doubts any questions protein so vegetarian protein is normal combination of your dal chawal all your dals horse gram being the very best among the all followed by moong followed by tuar and chana so normal combination of whatever you eat uh, that gives you the best amino acids and that is your good vegetarian protein followed by your nuts every day one um, handful of nuts whether it's your almond cashew walnut they are also protein uh, your sprouts again they are again covered and then your lentils your rajma chole the dairy products especially your paneer milk curd curd is some Something that we all can afford to have so curd all these are your vegetarian protein mm, i think uh, i'm so vegetarian okay many athletes have switched to vegan diet from non-veg can you explain why um yeah this is a very good question so uh it i can answer it in two ways so maybe a little link to the olden spiritual sanskrit you know connect also so generally uh when we uh look at our old scriptures there are three kinds of food categories um it's called tamsik rajse, uh, rajsik and sattvic so whenever you are having sattvic food that's the vegetarian kind of food like you know uh, devoid of um, all your garlic and all of that uh it's said that your very stable you're you get you're able to concentrate better and you're able to uh, feel more alert you're more agile uh, then when you have a radsik diet radsik diet is a very high non-vegetarian rich in you know high high non-veg diet um, which has all your red meat and white meat so uh, it's based on a study that people feel more lighter and more energetic when they switch off to a vegetarian or a vegan diet um, that's the spiritual part of answering where based on the research and study but when you look at the actual scientific reasoning uh, non-vegetarian foods these days are infused with a lot of hormones um, like you know your chicken your even milk as a matter of fact your mutton all of that so with these uh, and since these runners really train very hard and they need a lot of protein um, when you have a lot of these uh, hormone infused non-veg it causes um, imbalance in the body and that is why people uh, end up having a lot of aggression uh, hormonal imbalances you know testosterone estrogen and all of that and I, I think that is why people have switched more to vegan so that basically it's a plant-based diet and you can cut down on these hormones so I think I've answered that uh i i am losing out on a lot of questions but uh, whatever i can see um if anyone is suffering with pcod what is the diet so i think that's a totally different thing uh, if you are a pcod with uh, and a runner then it's different if you are just a pcod then it's a different thing so i think that's uh, totally for a different session um 
um our energy drinks appreciable pre and post physical caffeine uh, activity caffeine so energy drinks are basically your whatever like i was talking about uh, the isotonic hypotonic one so it depends so it, during the game or during the run uh, yes we do suggest like i said depending on what kind of you are running it's usually hypotonic or an isotonic drink that we suggest and uh, pre uh, pre workout we don't really give an energy drink because then i want the person to eat something solid at least one hour before so like i said we su we suggest a meal and post physical activity and energy drink uh, is not really given it's basically whey protein given depending on how uh, what distance he or she has run and how intense it was uh, caffeine can be a good pre workout um, drink because caffeine especially when you talk about a black coffee or your green tea again pre workout i'm talking about 1 hour before not like half an hour or 20 minutes before 1 hour before uh, it's at least known to uh, you know cause the uh, it increases your metabolism and it burns uh, it's known to decrease good fat so it helps in the stimulation of the energy and it keeps you more energetic and alert so uh, caffeine pre workout 1 hour before a small 120 ml of you know black coffee or green tea works uh, but uh, not only that i want i mean i also suggest good 300 to 350 400 grams of carbs uh, in form in the form of a meal um, along with that before a run uh someone with a high tendency of accumulating uric acid manage their protein sources so yeah uric acid and running so if you're asking me in general uric acid uh, yes it, it's a totally different story uric acid and how you manage the protein sources uh, then you need to really count the purine content and look at the total dietary recall and see what kind of protein sources you're having doesn't mean just because you have uric acid you need to cut down on all protein sources certain protein sources in the form of alcohol non veg especially red meat has to go off your diet but you can have egg whites and all of that but if it's a runner and uric acid like you know uh, scenario or if you're in general asking about uric acid then it's a totally different thing because in general there are a lot of reasons why you can have uric acid you can it can also be because of weight it can be because of lot of other things so if anyone is suffering uh, so someone aiming to be a hybrid athlete okay uh so macro requirement um, so hybrid you mean to say um like your uh, okay endurance plus strength anywhere between 3000 to 3500 kilocals if it's a female and um, um maximum up to 4000 male provided you're doing a very high intensity strength training otherwise 3 to 3500 kilocals of energy carbs may be between uh, 5 to 7 grams per kg body weight indian scenario and uh, fats you can go up to 20 to 25% because i would not even like to touch 30 here and protein uh, taking starting off with 1.5 gram per your kg body weight okay so i think uh, that's it um you have a banana in pre workout is enough enough so banana again pre workout if it's just a normal gym session that you're doing and it's not very intense then yes could be enough because banana is not really giving you 300 grams of carbs but if you're talking about a run again what kind of a run are you running a marathon then not enough are you running a sprint then again how how what's the distance of the sprint so depends on all these factors generally pre workout if you're asking me banana assuming that it's a normal small gym session of half an hour or 40 minutes then yes it's enough um i think that is it do i i think do you see anything else i don't know if i missed out on anything you can just unmute and ask otherwise i think i would wind up बनने वाला ना था। आह आई थिंक यू कैन बाइंड अप मैम देस नो मोर क्वेश्चन। या
So thank you. Thank you very much. I hope this was insightful and thank you all for a very patient hearing. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah.